हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय गेम रिकैप ऑफ राउंड नंबर फाइव फ्रॉम वर्स ऑफ चेस फेस्टिवल यू ऑल नो दैट आई एम प्लेइंग इन नडॉर्फ मेमोरियल टूर्नामेंट एंड एस्टरडे वी लुक्ड एट माय नडॉर्फ गेम आल्सो टुडे आई वाज प्लेइंग फ्रॉम वाइट साइड अगेंस्ट टैलेंटेड यंग सेवेंटीन ईयर्स ओल्ड फ्रॉम पोलैंड मिकोलास जी एंड दिस गेम वॉज इंटरेस्टिंग Uh, some uh, very crucial decisions had to be made in the game and uh, there were a lot of ups and downs were going on so but i will say like this game i was playing much much stable than the previous game so and uh, very nice tactic also happened on the board so let's begin with it so okay so do like the video share and subscribe to your uh, friends also the game starts with d4 i was white so i started with d4 in previous two games from white side i played e4 so today i thought like let's play something new so i played d4 he played knight f6 c4 uh, g6 knight c3 i knew that my opponent plays uh, king's indian defense so he played this thing and after playing this uh, initial moves here i started thinking a little bit because i thought like he must have seen what i play and everything so i thought like today let's play something which i have not played earlier and in my second round game against uh, the grandmaster uh, he played uh, one variation means i was playing from the black side he played bishop e2 bishop e3 variation so, and uh, i was feeling very uncomfortable after that variation so i thought like why not do that thing today from our different side so i played bishop e2 and he castled as per the normal then i played bishop to e3 and now here he uh, immediately played knight c6 in my game uh, i if you remember i played e5 in this position and then d5 happened and so on but he played knight to c6 provoking d5 so i said like okay let's play d5 knight will come here and uh, earlier i was thinking about this move then uh, he will attack here and then i thought like maybe i need to go back but i did not uh, like it that much so i wanted to stop this thing another idea was also there that i a knight of three is there and if this is uh, under attack i can play this thing and again the knight needs to move so this was also a very interesting option but i decided uh, that i want to stop knight g4 so i just stopped it with uh, h3 and now i'm going to play f4 but apparently that was not the best uh, choice in the position uh e6 was played by him uh, quite fast then i played knight f3 i said like okay let's exchange he exchanged and then he played uh like he thought for a long time here in this position and i was not really understanding what he is actually thinking i was calculating that maybe he'll play knight d7 knight c5 after a5 and so on try to put up some pressure after the capture rook will also come on e8 file and uh, e e file you can say and uh, he will get very good play that is what i was thinking but to my surprise here in this position he played knight e8 which i was not even considering now i said like okay maybe he wants to play f5 or something let's continue with our development so i played queen d2 the idea is there like at some point i might play bishop to h6 and exchange the bishop but right now it is not needed and he played another interesting move c5 and after c5 i was seriously considering dc6 bc6 and uh, maybe sometimes uh, c5 or just uh, castle but I was not really liking that at some point he might play d5 or something whenever I play c5. So I said like okay, I will play in a different way. Uh, I played rook d1 hoping that he might just capture here but he did not capture. He blocked the position with e5. Okay, now the position is blocked and uh, I said like okay, this is some kind of uh, you can say the comfortable position for me which I have played also in past. Similar positions I mean to say. So I went for g4. The idea of g4 is like I am just trying to restrict black's play on the king side. If uh, I manage to restrict black's play on the king side, then I will be having some chances after that because king's Indian is some kind of opening you can say where black needs to find out some kind of initiative. So if you don't find the initiative, then you will not be worse immediately. But I say like as a king's Indian player myself, it feels difficult. to play to find the moves to plan the plans and everything so i played g4 and of course like here in this position uh, he played f5 immediately which uh, was kind of provoking uh, also that i like we will just uh, open the g file and i'll put some pressure but when i was going to play this thing another move which i considered was bishop captures uh, means e captures f5 bishop captures f5 and exchanging the bishop this is what i was also considering but instead of that i suddenly felt like why not play first bishop g5 here and then i'll bring the rook on g1 so that i will not uh, be forced to exchange my bishop the light square bishop so i played bishop g5 here 
and after this he uh, decided to just play knight uh, queen to d7 and again queen d7 was a strange move for me i said like okay whatever he wants to do let him do let's play rook g1 try to get the rook in the game now i have certain threats i will be putting some pressure over here bishop at six also sometimes possible so he played king h8 getting away from the <coughs> pin now it was time for me to bring the queen i felt like that so i played queen e2 another idea of queen e2 was like if it is needed i can play king d2 and uh, move away from this uh, rooks uh, rank you can say and uh, rook's path also you can say and then i my other rook will be ready to come uh, in the game much more faster so here in this position uh, he played a6 i was thinking like maybe he could have played b5 also at some point and after a6 i finally decided to capture he captured with the queen and then uh, after the queen captures on f5 i just simply played bishop to e4 attacking the queen and now here in this position i found out a very very nice uh, move how I uh, came up with this move was also very interesting. You know the book Reassess Your Chess. In that book, they have talked about, Mr. Author has talked about the worst piece rule. Like if your one of your pieces is not playing well in the game, you should bring that piece in the game in order to improve the position. Improve the pieces in order to improve the position. So here I took stock about my position, but the knight is uh, well played up. You can say bishop is also there. This bishop on g5 is also well developed, rook on g1. But the rook on d1 is not doing that much. So I thought like why not bring that rook in the game so that my position will just improve. So in order to just improve the position of the rook, I played rook d3. The idea is quite simple. I want to play rook g3 and attack the bishop. So here he played knight f6 and suddenly I felt like instead of playing rook to g3, why not just pin the knight on f6. So I went for rook to f3, pinned it and um, here I was seriously considering that maybe he can play queen h5 attacking my bishop and I was thinking about bishop uh, coming back and then maybe play rook g5 or something but maybe it was not the best uh, choice from my side so here um, he played bishop d7 okay to be honest so after bishop to d7 i was thinking maybe to just bring the bishop behind on d3 or maybe on c2 that was my initial thought but suddenly when i was thinking i felt like there is something missing in black's position there is something wrong in black's position so i started thinking about the captures because that is what we should be doing checks captures and threats we should think about it ccd principle which i have taught to my many of my students so i went for the captures in the position uh, when you are thinking about the captures it's not just about uh, any given capture when your opponent captures and you capture it back the main point of captures is like looking at the moves which are not exactly possible on the board so here I saw that I can actually capture on h7 and bring the king out. If the king comes out, then I will be able to uh, do something against the king. So I calculated the perfect variation which allowed me to win and the variation is like this. Bishop captures h7. Maybe he couldn't have captured, like he shouldn't have captured, but he, sh he captured and then now I brought my third pin. Oh, sorry, first knight e4 was not the move because if you play knight to e4, it is the wrong move because he can play queen g6. Okay. So while playing the game, I realized that I cannot allow queen g6. So I first captured on f6, bishop captures f6 and then I brought knight to e4 square. Now, no matter what you do, the bishop is always going to be under pressure and he played queen e7 so that bishop will uh, kind of defend black's king. But I did not give him in chance. I gave him a check rook captured here and then i gave another check with the queen now the king doesn't have that many squares if he comes here it is just one more checkmate and if the king goes behind in this position then also i just give the check rook will come in between but the queen will be lost so that is also not acceptable for black so in this position instead of uh, the playing the king he played rook to f5 and i simply captured here it is also going to be checkmate uh, after queen captures f5 king h8 I have a good move, the last move of the game, that was queen to g6. And with his smiling face, he resigned because he said like, okay, it was a very good game. And I also felt after the game that I played actually a good game, which I enjoyed also. And uh, I managed to find that tactic that was also very beautiful. So guys, uh, wish me good luck. Tomorrow I'm going to play against a very legendary player, uh, Michel Krasenko who is considered to be the Polish legend. He was 2700 player in past, but now he's 2520. And I'm going to play against him tomorrow in the sixth round of uh, Night of Memorial. So let's see what happens. Uh, do follow the channel, miss subscribe to the channel, like this video, share this video with your friends and uh, come back tomorrow to watch the 
गेम ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच बाय टेक केयर